Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Laura. We do not consent to any reptilian or archon entities. We do not consent to you. Okay, there's a little bit of a strange energy happening right now where we're in between worlds, that's how I feel. And um, it can actually feel like you've been moved to a place or you are being moved to a place where you are gonna be in vibrational alignment and it could feel very wildly expansive in your being. And it's like uncomfortable because there's a sense of tremendous growth for star seeds that have been holding the light for the last three or four years or longer. And it's like you've outgrown where you've been because you're now gonna be elevated to hold more light in a different location on the earth possibly, or you're going to be elevated because you can no longer stay where you are. You've outgrown where you are. And I feel like what happens is when you're a twin flame or when you're awakened or whatever, you start to have a path unfold for you that is not what you would have your path be if you were still in your ego. And so whatever the path is that's unfolding for you consistently is gonna push you, it's going to be uncomfortable. And I feel like I'm hearing a lot of this is what makes us look at our counterpart and feel some type of way towards them because there's a feeling that they're not constantly growing and expanding because we can't see it. It looks like they're staying in the same place and it looks like uh, nothing is happening the way that it feels that it's dramatically always happening for us who are the awakened counterpart, you could say. And I don't like to say that one's awake and one isn't because that's not really how it works. It's just that we are fundamentally holding two totally different vibrations. One of you is typically holding a third dimension vibration. One of you is holding a fifth dimension vibration. And so it's like you're constantly balancing out each other and whatever they are doing in the 3D is balancing for the other one to be in the fifth dimension. And this I'm also hearing is coming to an end because we have to start to merge back together to form a balanced physical manifestation of the energies that you have been holding the extremes of. So that's what feels like it's changing here. I'm getting earth pulsing, pulse of the mother, slow down time in nature, inner earth. There's a lot of feeling here of earth energy coming through, pulling you to the earth, aligning you to a uh, feeling of earth time. So um, what that means is we're not on astral time, we're on earth time now. And so it could feel almost like everything has slowed down to a total halt in this energy. And it could also feel with the inner earth, you'll survive this. Yeah, uh, some of you are coming out of survival mode very strong. And I'm also getting um, called is on the bottom of the deck. Yeah, so you'll rest, but you won't rest for too long before you're gonna be called somewhere, somewhere new. Yeah, um, okay. The one who looks like they're in the 3D has been in survival mode very strong. And I get this repeating message. Divine masculine energy typically has been dealing with some very unconscious, low vibe energies around them. Inner earth is my reptilian card sometimes, typically. And it's the energies that are under the surface that are coming up to the light, that we're starting to see them for what they are. Let's clarify this. We're starting to see this inner earth, what used to dwell under the surface, now start to be revealed. And so it feels like Divine Masculine's making a lot of changes because they're now, the unconscious is now becoming conscious for them. The subconscious is becoming more conscious. And also we're being aligned here to where you're meant to be on the earth. You're going to be called to where you're meant to be because a lot of this is you were on mission to do something that, um, I just saw 444. You were on mission to be somewhere that felt like it was stable, that felt like you were anchoring for a very long time and that mission has now changed. 
because it wasn't a feeling of being relaxed and being on mission. It wasn't a feeling that you were being rewarded in this heaven on earth type of 5D experience. This inner earth feels very much like a challenge, like a triggering experience. And it feels like king of wands, queen of wands, extreme knight of wands. <laughs> uh, lots of fire here, but also lots of fake false energy. This is false light. And this feels like these are, this is a false light couple. And this is a couple that feels like it was all just totally smoke and mirrors. I feel like star cards here. There's healing that's happening to the counterpart, divine masculine, that's been with a counterfeit feminine energy, that's been uh, playing at something that looked really um, uh, passionate, that, that felt very exciting, but it feels like um, the healing that has needed to occur from this type of experience has now occurred. This is like someone who I'm getting um, to make this more clear message, um, likes to live in their addictions, swims in their addictions, loves to be um, engaging in, I don't know, drinking, partying, drugs, alcohol, um, all kinds of things, lots of like sex parties I'm getting. I don't know. It could be anything. That might be extreme, but it feels like there's something that this masculine had to get out of their system fully because they had to heal it. And that's the inner earth. And that feels like something where you don't want to um, be around your divine feminine counterpart if you have not got this out of your system yet. So, okay. And I don't, I feel like there could be any number of things going on here, but it's, um, it's definitely a sense, King of Swords and the Empress, it's definitely a sense that this masculine had to keep their divine feminine at arm's distance and very far away from them while they were still engaging in this type of energy. And I could also, it could also be um, a relationship that's only about materialism, that's only about, you know, it. this, this could be a number of things, okay? Because it looks like uh, some type of connection with someone that is, um, ideal, but it's ideal for the matrix and it's ideal for the ones that are asleep that may be inspired by this type of energy, but it is not inspiring to divine feminine. It's not inspiring to anyone who's on a true awakened path and journey. And this is also Archangel Michael energy. And I feel this is Archangel Michael stepped in to say, we're not allowing Divine Feminine to be around Divine Masculine when they are in this type of environment, in this type of very uh, fake energy, because Divine Feminine cannot tolerate that vibration. Okay, so like when I say you don't bother your twin flame, if they're not reaching out to you, it's because you are being protected. You don't want them to reach out to you while they're in this energy because it would be very upsetting for you to witness your counterpart when they are not fully healed. So allowing your counterpart to go through whatever they're going through with a false light mask, let's get an archetype card, with whatever they have to do, because to me, this is also a feeling that they were holding the light through whatever they were doing here, through whatever this, um, energy was. So if they were involved in a crowd of people and a community of people I'm getting that were um, not in their highest timeline, that's because they were meant to be there. And so there's a lot of feeling of purpose here, even though from your perspective, Divine Feminine looking in or looking at what's going on from a different perspective, it looks like they're not doing any work or they're not awakened. And I actually feel that's also not entirely the case. But we leave them alone to do whatever they need to do so that um, we both arrive at this new energy together where you can slow down and realign to what's actually important here. 
and what you're really meant to be nurturing, bringing forth. I feel a total sense of peace, a total different grounded energy here where when Divine Masculine is fully ready to let this other energy go, that's survival mode, that's chaotic, that's kind of uh, impulsive, that's not committed to anything, um, not deeply committed to anything, then they will start to be realigned to enter into a total different type of feeling here. It's like a 180, okay, where they're going to be slowed down to align to the Divine Feminine. And they also the Divine Feminine energy of the Earth. The Bardot, the One, the Pilgrim. It's reminding me of called here, the Pilgrim being called towards the One, which is recognizing your higher mission. That's what I get. The One is you when you are in your higher mission. The bardo is about a feeling of being um, suspended between realms to me. And it is it is that sense of these are very different realms. <laughs> and so it feels like Divine Masculine is transitioning between one realm of energy that is the lower world type of energy and they are being moved and called to where they're going to actually be able to be their higher self their more enlightened, higher self, but it's it's a very rite of passage feeling to me. It's a very prodigal son returns type of energy to me where um, your higher mission is gonna keep calling you no matter what you're doing. And it's like you feel um, from the Divine Masculine's perspective, they can feel like they're not done being this undercover light worker, being this, um, um, Clark Kent, when he's hiding and not showing that he's actually Superman, that's the feeling. And it's like Matrix, it's like Neo prior to being awakened to being the one. And that's the feeling here, is that, well, once I really reveal my truest light and my highest mission, there's no other where, there's no other place to go above that. And so it's like this feeling of, um, we're going to put that off as long as possible. And a lot of people do this on a spiritual journey. You have one foot in two different versions of yourself. Because once you fully embody the spiritual version of yourself, the one that doesn't. It's like I stopped drinking alcohol four years ago, but it took me 15 years to stop drinking. Because I wanted to stop drinking almost the minute that I started because I knew it was not good for me. There's something in you that knows when you're doing something that's not good for you, you know you're gonna have to give it up eventually, but you can't fully give it up eventually. You can't give up the false light relationships where you don't have to show up fully. You can't give up the addictions. You can't give up the um, jobs that are unfulfilling, but they pay the bills, whatever. You, to be a higher version of you that could actually bring in wild abundance, that could anchor in a total new earth, the pilgrim, because this is about the pilgrims coming in. And I don't know if it was YouTube or Patreon, but there was a lot of feeling here that we as the awakened 144,000 are similar to the pilgrims who came to America. We are coming to the new earth because we are building it, because we are merging into a crystalline version of ourselves in the same type of way and it's like going totally into the unknown and that can be extremely scary so when you're ready to actually be your most spiritual highest self it can feel like a death experience it can feel like the bardo it can feel like well i'm very comfortable in this debauchery type of experience of the third dimension earth and if I go into a spiritual world, you know, where, what's that going to be like? And so you just intuitively stay away, Eros. Okay. And I love that we have Eros here and the father. Yeah. Because the masculine's truest passion is guiding them forth. That's the Knight of Wands energy here. They're going to go where they're the most passionate. And if there's no more passion or if the healing and the energy has been 
completed here in what they've been in, in this lower world energy, and there's no more passion. It's like the addiction has worn off. It's no longer fun. The party is over, I'm hearing, <laughs> because it's just become very mundane and boring. They're gonna be ejected out of that timeline, and that's exactly what's happening, because the Eros is the driving force of love that's calling them higher to a bigger mission. Okay, let's get a card for Eros. Let's get an energy card. I might read Eros out of the book, but it's, it's basically being guided by passion, and being guided to spread more love, okay? To the one that you're feeling the most passion and desire for. Here. Okay. Because with all the fire over here in the inner earth in survival mode, there is not, the passion is actually over here with the empress. Okay. Because this other wand's energy is false and it's ego driven. Whereas Eros is divinely driven. So you're moving from the ego to your divine higher self running you. Okay. Healer of the ages. <laughs> and um, okay, because this would be the healed version, the star, the healed version of the divine masculine who's ready to step into their higher mission as a healer of the ages. Okay, and adjacent possibilities, right? Because there's no more possibilities here. Everything is closed to, to Divine Masculine in this lower world reality. All of the open doors are over here with the Healer of the Ages and hostilities, of course, is behind that. Because eh, there feels like a very conscious knowing and awareness that in order to evade the hostile energy that seems like it's all around you when you're in the lower world, that you have no choice but to emerge as your higher self. And your higher self is the one that is going to be the one to save you. It's not anyone else. It's not your counterpart. It's yourself. And it's you actually raising your own vibration so that you can have more to do because there is a sense that you have nothing left to do here where you've been and it's reached a total uh, standstill to me and the possibilities and the newness it's gonna feel very different it's gonna feel like um a new energy completely but it feels like you will evade everything that has almost caught up with you here the hostile energy that's been right um, behind you because the hostile energy, the ones who are actually your karmics, you could say, the karmic deranged energies do you a favor because they actually push you out of where you've been so that you know you have to go somewhere else. If it was just, if it was just a party every day and everything was fantastic, you wouldn't feel the need to have to rise into a higher version of yourself, overcome this false light energy, and do anything different. I feel like it's a combination of passion for your feminine and a combination of knowing that you have more possibilities when you embody a healer version of yourself, a spiritual type of leader version of yourself. Okay. And there's no more time to really waste in this uh, awareness that's building. Okay. And because we have arrows, I'm going to get a sexual tarot card on this to see what we have here. It's a total different type of passion. It's a spiritual passion. It's not a physical lust passion that you have for your divine counterpart. Although you do have a strong sexual connection because it's a strong spiritual connection. But the spiritual connection here is what is driving you forth. Okay, tell me about arrows, please. Four of Cups. Queen of Swords. 
The lovers is on the bottom of the deck. So, okay. Uh, it feels like the, um, we have king and queen of swords here, which is a, a telepathic energy between counterparts. So, and the four of cups is about your intuition being very loud, very strong at this time, but you are still feeling and thinking about all of the things that have not worked out. You're thinking about divine masculine feels that they have this sense, um, if they go through this gate here, I'm just looking at how he's looking through the gate, that um, they are not convinced it's better over there yet. And that's the feeling to me, is that I'm also getting with Queen of Swords, that there is a scorned feminine energy here. It feels like um, the ones that are attempting the hostile, the hostile energies that have attempted to keep Divine Masculine from their telepathic connection, from their higher timeline. Uh, this is a sense of um, being very torn, is what I get here. Divine Masculine feels very torn because it, it all of a sudden got very uncomfortable to me with Eros. So it's a feeling of um, your type of passionate love that drives you for your spiritual equal, which is your twin flame, is not going to be understood that way by anyone who is on the old timeline because all they're going to see is that you have some type of lust and passion for someone else and they're not going to get that it's spiritual and divinely guided and that you're actually kind of playing out, you're even playing out um, the Eros and Psyche story between you. So I've always felt that counterparts do embody the Eros Psyche um, connection very strong. And a lot of times if people are in the inner earth in the lower world, they're not understanding Eros and Psyche and the call towards the lover that is your spiritual equal. That's not how they look at the earth and the world around them. They don't look at it that way. And there's also a feeling here of demonizing with Queen of Swords and King of Swords. It's kind of like I get, other people have said to Divine Masculine who are in the false light energy that this is not the right connection for you. I just am hearing a lot of um, talk behind their back or maybe to, to their face, but it's a feeling of don't go towards that one because they're gonna lead you down the wrong path because there's all this hostile energy that's attempting to keep Divine Masculine from their counterpart from what they're feeling, which is actually their ultimate destiny as their higher self. Okay, I was gonna find arrows here and then we'll wrap this up, okay. Um, there's a lot of desire in this energy. There's a lot of desire, there's a lot of um, possibilities that feel like they're building here. And it's like, um, I have to, it, there's no more time to waste. Yeah, love as desire, sensuality, eroticism. Okay, because a lot of you are sexual healers, I've said that before. Where we have this with the pilgrims here, we're overcoming a lot of puritanical programming, which does not help us. That's because a lot of you here, especially in this energy that's coming through today, where there's some, some type of really chaotic sexual energy that we've been partaking in here, that it's misdirected and it needs to be funneled into something more high vibrational and it needs to be not seen as such a taboo. Okay. <laughs> okay. Though Eros can be depicted as unbridled sexuality and eroticism, a more contemplative understanding of this archetypal energy leads us to the root of desire itself. What do we long for? Why are we awakened by love? What makes us hesitate in the face of intimacy? Eros reconnects us with the primal longing to merge with another human being. Nature, music, art, plants, food, or anything that we perceive we are separate from. Eros allows us to momentarily unite. Our heart embraces otherness 
and in doing so, we further understand our own. Our life force awakens. This card reveals an inevitable initiation into love's labyrinth. You may find yourself swirling in a new territory of desire and sensuality. Explore the labyrinth with a curious and honest heart. And remember, though it is circuitous, you are always being led to its center. Okay. Yeah. Because, um, yeah. Counterparts at this level, twin flames at this level, the what actually blasts you into a higher level of understanding and consciousness is your physical connection to each other. And that is something where I feel there's some type of conscious understanding of the fact that your physical connection to each other is very powerful and what you feel for each other is not something toxic and false light. What you feel for each other opens the doors to the higher dimensions and realms. Okay. And we are going to talk more about this, I feel, on Patreon because I don't feel like this is the type of, this type of mystery school type of energy where it's not really meant for everyone. And so that's the true twin flame journey. And that's what we feel intuitively. And that's what's coming through here is that all the possibilities for all the things that you have not yet untapped within yourself will come through with this higher connection. And also, if there has been such a orchestrated endeavor and effort to keep you from your counterpart, which I feel has been a running theme here, there's gotta be something to it that's more than just though this person's not right for you. It's actually because they open the keys to the universe, okay? And that's why it's such a big deal when you're activated as a twin flame and why immediately, why you can't be with your twin flame when it's like they're the most perfect person for you that you've ever met in your life. And it doesn't make sense why you don't just easily come together and there's all this interference and there's all this stuff and the counterpart runs from you and the other one chases you and it's all this stuff. There's much more to it on the surface than just a regular romantic connection. And that's why, uh, it gr takes a hold of you in such a direct way because it un it takes the veil down for so many different things and awakens your DNA. And it, it's a profound experience that unless you're going through it, you just don't know that this type of thing even exists. And that's why we make videos and that's why we channel messages and that's why I come on here and do all of this is so that we make sense of this incredibly um, life altering journey that you find yourselves on. <laughs> okay, so I am sending you all much peace and light. Take care, everyone.